Hello, this is Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. Thanks for joining me today. I'll be answering a question someone asked. Specifically, I wanted to know, how do I export from one environment in VMware to another? Uh, the question was really related to, what if you create something in 6.7 and then you want to export it and bring it back into uh, 6.5 or into, actually you wouldn't have a problem if you went up a version. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you a bit of how the versioning works. So we have our vSphere ESXi 7.0 that we set up in previous videos for testing. This is running off a Dell PowerEdge R640. And what we're going to do is we're going to go have a quick look. So if I go select, I'm going to pick a, something at random here, a Windows 10 machine. This is a, an evaluation 10 in there that uh, basically is there to test. And I routine, routinely destroy it, recreate it and whatnot just to uh, move things around and test. So if I were to go into actions and go to upgrade VM compatibility, this is where I could select what I want to have from a version point of view. And if I were to select ESX7, for example, and click on upgrade, then, then it'll tell me that it won't be compatible with previous versions. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now I'm on version 7 for Windows 10, that VM. Now, if I were to export it, and want to bring it back to a 6.7, then I would have a different problem because it would recognize that it's a different higher version and would refuse and give us some errors. So first off, to export, very simple, you right click or as I did previously, you just click on the action, it's same thing really. And then you're gonna go here and click on export. And I'm gonna go and select what I have here, which is uh, the OVF, we don't need the MF, but it's by default, and the VMDX. So I'm going to go ahead and do an export, and it's going to ask me where do I want to export it to. I'm going to go ahead and save it, and I'm doing this for all of these. And so it's not terribly big, so it shouldn't take very long. And we do see the 50%. Sometimes it hangs there for a little while. And what you'll see is I'm setting it to downloads demo in this case. And so it will end up in this location. So here we go, this is finished. And before we go much further, if you enjoy these videos or these types of videos, please give us a thumbs up. And of course, please help us out by subscribing. It really does help. And let's get back to this. So the hardware, the virtual hardware version, let's talk about that for one little second. What I've got here is just an explanation. So what we'll see is that version 17 is the current version, the most latest as of this video, and it is version 7.0, which is the, the last version that we covered recently. Uh, if we go back, you'll notice that some of the versions are have to do with Workstation Pro, Player, and Fusion, such as 16. Uh, if we go back in the past, we have 6.7, U2, and so forth. Now. If you want to make it more compatible, this is going to be important because we need to know what version you'll need in the future. Uh, of course, you can go and alter this as I'll show you in a moment. So right now we have just set that virtual machine to ESXi 7. So I'm assuming, and we'll check in a moment, that we should be able to see in the configuration number 17. And this is going to be important in a sec. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and so this is where this ended up so what we have is an OVF file which is very small 15k and we have a VMDK which is the actual disk of this machine first foremost if you want to modify this if you have something like um, a VMware uh, workstation installed you may have the OVF that automatically associates with that what we're going to want to do in your case is right click go to properties and make sure that opens with, in this case, goes to Notepad. This is on purpose, we want to open it with Notepad right now to take a look at it. If you're using Linux or Apple, of course, use the appropriate tool to go and modify things. Now let's go ahead and click on Edit. Let me move this to the screen where you can see it. And here is what we have. Now it may look very daunting to you, it may look like a lot of information. We don't need most of this. What we're looking for is VMX-17. 17 being the version we just talked about. So if we go down, it's usually around, actually I just found it right here. And so you'll see the line says VSSD virtual system type VMX-17. This 
is all within the section that says system. And if we wanted to go back, if you remember a second ago, we said that we want to go back in the past. So let's say I wanted to go back from 7 to 6.7 or 6.5. Let's go all the way back to 6.5. Then we would want to have version 13. Or, I mean, we can definitely put it before that. If we want to go to 6.0, we could put 11. So let's pretend now I want to bring back this virtual machine on another ESXi, but version 6.5 in this case that I have lying around uh, in my lab or in my production environment, then what I would do is I would go, you guessed it, I'd go back here, change to 17 to 13, and simply do save, and that would be it. So now I've gone ahead and saved this one. It's been altered slightly. It's okay. If you have um, an error message, there's an additional file there that we saw earlier, which was basically the other file I told you that you did not need, which is the MF file, which is actually in the background trying to save right now. Delete that, try that, that's usually the fastest trick. I'm actually gonna do cancel on that one. It's not necessary. So now I've gone ahead and I've exported it. Uh, I'm not gonna switch systems on you. What I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to delete this one. I'm gonna delete my VM, so that one's gone. Now if I want to import it, so I'm doing this in reverse, of course I'm doing it on the 7.0 Again, since it's the same system, but uh, it will hold true for any version. At that point, what you would do is you would say uh, create register VM and you'll see here it says deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or OVA file. You click on that, say select, and then you give it a name. So I could say Windows 10 demo. And then it's going to ask you to drop and drag the files. So I would go and take my two files here these two and I would simply move them over here lower this and then I would do next and then it, it's asking me where I want to send it to so I've got a two terabyte it's asking me if I want thin or thin it's asking me which internal port VM I mean you, you've got to select a few things it is very very important when you do this you will get errors if you don't think of this ahead of time uh, is when you go and bring it back not saying a disk is missing, but in this case it's fine. So you go ahead and click finish and it comes back. Now the point you need to look out for, uh, if you have a different version especially, if you had a machine that had 40 CPUs and your VM happens to use 20 of those, if you bring it back into an environment where there's only two or four or six or eight available, less than what you had, then you really, really need to go into edit settings and you need to change the number of CPUs, the memory, and what whatever you need to make sure that they have enough resources to run this VM. The other thing I want you to make sure um, is see what it says on top here. It says ESX 6.5 virtual machine. Now it says that because we changed it to 13. If I left it at 13, uh, 17, excuse me, then I would have 7.0 at the top. And of course, I, all versions in between. Some of those versions, do keep in mind, they're for the workstation, the, the Fusion and so forth that run on off the Macs or run off Windows uh, 10, Windows uh, 7, I guess, depending on the version. But um, so for the ESXs, try to use the 13 and, and the other versions that are appropriate for ESX. I'm not sure what would happen. I haven't tried that yet, to be honest with you, but let's play it safe and let's actually use a version that is recognized and used by ESX. That's the easiest way of doing it. It's just making sure it's proper right from the get-go. So um, that would be it. You do a save and then your machine at this point, you simply need to you know, click on it and power it on and probably okay upload disk i don't think it was finished yet yes okay it's also important to make sure that it is finished copying over before you try to do too many things to it um in my haste i hadn't noticed that we're at 52 percent uh for the disk on the bottom so Editing anything at this point is pointless. It'll just give you a message at the bottom that says failed. So you're gonna have to be a little patient. So I'm gonna wait for this to finalize. Now while we're waiting for this to complete, 
one of the things that uh, you're probably going to wonder, or some of you are going to ask me, uh, what's why do we have these hardware versions? This has to do with obviously the advancements when you get from a let's say an ESX 5.5 to 7. Uh, or to 6 or to 6.5 the changes really are at the hardware level so you've got new CPUs have new capabilities they'll have features built in they'll have uh, potentially uh, encryption chips built into the motherboard they'll have so there's more and more pieces that get added to the ESX as it goes along uh, not only drivers but plain functionality things that get added so when you have a version a virtual hardware version when it's very old, it may limit you to certain things that would then become available if you had a higher version. So, so you can move forward. You can take a machine that was originally done for 10 or 12 or 13 um, and run it on 7, as you saw. If I go into here, okay, so now my machine is finally here. And now I can click on it and I can power it up. I can do edit. I can go and take a look at it. And it says ESXi 6.5. So it's a virtual machine. And if I wanted to, I could go and modify things as required. So what we're going to do is, I believe it's actually powering on or powered on. Let me just take a quick look. Uh, yes, apparently it is running in the background. So um, that was fast. So it went ahead and powered itself up. I'm going to power it down. And now you have the ability to completely change it and change CPUs. Go ahead and change the memory. And of course, if you need to increase disk space and so forth, this is when you do it. And then you would save it and power it on. And you can, of course, when you've, if you ever bring it back to a different environment and you do want to bring it back up a version at that point, it's again, you go back here and you simply click on where it says upgrade VM compatibility. And you could do this all over again and say, ooh, I want to have 6.7 U2 now and click on upgrade and do that. So I hope this has uh, answered the question. I hope it was useful. This is Bob Pellerin. Please don't forget to subscribe if you can and uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave comments below. You can always also reach us uh, through www.ctobob.com. Uh, this uh, the site is less and less used since we're using YouTube as a way of communicating with you at this point. And uh, we do enjoy all the comments. I do get a lot of emails and it's great to be able to help people out. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.